Hi there! Well, I am so excited and relieved to be bringing you this video today. This is going to be a tour of our updated hall bathroom. So those of you who may have been following along the last few months, you know that we have been working on some projects around our house that were sort of thrust upon us in a way. We had a pipe leak that led to repiping the house and then replacing some flooring, repainting, and updating a hall bathroom. This bathroom was really in need of a facelift, so we made a lot of cosmetic changes in addition to all of the new plumbing. We've replaced the vanity, we have some new storage, we have new flooring, paint, and a whole lot of accessories. What we didn't do is retile the shower and tub that we have in that bathroom because a lot of these projects were not intentional. They were something that we weren't really anticipating. We kind of felt like we had to draw a line at some point. Fortunately, the tile that's in that bathroom is very simple, very plain. It's just off-white kind of plain square tiles. So there's really nothing special about it, which makes it not quite as urgent of a project, but it is something that I kind of wanted to disguise just a little bit. So that will lead to the shower curtain that I picked out. I'll kind of show you what I did with that. That's sort of the main focal point of the bathroom. And then I also have the new vanity and top and just some different accessories that go along with that. So I will show you all of that. What I thought I would do is just take you on a tour of the bathroom and sort of talk you through the things that I chose. But if you want a lot of really specific information, I will put some more pictures on my blog along with where I got the items from. That way I don't make this video way too long. But I am really excited to finally share it with you. This project has just been such a long one to get through. We've had so many issues and roadblocks and just problems. Um, the vanity was a really big part of that problem. It was something that we had ordered from Home Depot when it came damaged to us twice. And just lots of little things that sort of kept getting in the way. We felt like this was going to be a project that may drag on for many more months. But in any case, it, it is finally done and I'm really excited to show it to you. So let's go ahead and take a look. Before we get to what the bathroom looks like today, I thought we would do a quick flashback to what it looked like previously. I don't have great before pictures because as I mentioned before, this was an unanticipated project. This all came about very suddenly with a broken pipe in the area that you're seeing here. So we ripped out the vanity and I just took some quick photographs as we were going through this process. You can see Sarah was quite upset about it too. She used to get water from that vanity sink. So she was really upset to come in and find that the whole thing was gone. And then the next picture you're going to see is where we had hand chipped out some of the tile. We ended up ripping out a lot of other tile throughout the house and replaced it with the wood look tile, which I've already shown you in a previous video. And here is what it looked like afterwards once we got the tile and new toilet in. Okay, so we are coming into the bathroom here from the hallway. This bathroom actually has two entrances, which makes it a little bit awkward, but I'm gonna start here with this entrance and we'll just work our way through. So the first thing that you're gonna see here is the vanity. This is uh, a foremost Naples vanity from Home Depot. I really wanted something with storage drawers on the side and then also under sink storage. So this was a really good combination of both of those for me. I also wanted something with classic styling. I wanted to be sort of simple, but I like that this had some nice touches to its nice little extras here on the sides. And I like those details. This is a combination of a poplar wood and then it's also got some laminate or I think it might be MDF. It's a combination of both of them so I'm not which, sure which part is which. I believe the drawers are real wood and then the top and bottom and then probably some of the MDF in the middle but it was very affordable which was also a really good thing. Now moving on to the vanity top. This is a custom vanity top that I also ordered from Home Depot. The brand is St. Paul and this is their sort of white and gray Carrera marble look-alike. I started off really wanting a quartz countertop but as we moved along in this project I realized that was probably going to be a little bit more expensive than what we wanted to spend especially in this bathroom. I've mentioned before that this isn't the home that we intend on living in forever so while we want to update it and enjoy it we don't want to get just too outrageous with the expenses and any of the updates that we do. So this was something that I felt like I could really live with. It was a little bit of a compromise, but I felt like they've really come a long way with the engineered surfaces. And I liked this one was white and then it had the really nice gray veining in it. So it sort of gave it that Carrera marble look for about half the price. So I went with the round sink. They also had a square sink. For some reason, this one just appealed to me. And of course it is center set. And then, 
The faucet here, this is from Delta. This is their Silverton line. I chose Silverton all throughout the bathroom, so the um, accessories, some of the accessories that are in here are also from the Silverton line, and then also in the shower, that is Silverton as well. And then a couple of things I have here are from Home Goods. So this is just a little tissue box cover, nothing too special about that. And I also got this from Home Goods, a soap dispenser. I just really love this as soon as I saw it. I like that it's clear, but I really like how you dispense the soap on this. So you press down this little lever and then the soap comes out there. And so I just thought that that was super cute. And then I also got this towel from Home Goods. I just like the little gray accent. I decided to use gray as sort of my accent color running throughout the bathroom. The wall color, this is from Sherwin-Williams. This is popular gray, so it's sort of a grayish type of color. So I could either go sort of gray or beigey taupe in here, so I decided to go with the gray because I really am liking that right now. I also updated our outlet covers and wall switch covers here just to make those blend a little bit better. And then I also found this little piece of artwork at Home Goods as well. It was really inexpensive. I want to say it was about $12.99 or maybe $14.99 at the most. But I love framed objects, so this really stood out to me. It's one of those things, again, that I saw and then walked away from and came back for, but it was just waiting there for me. And I just like the little shell there in the middle, and I like the white framing of it, and then it has the silver matting there in the background. I'm not sure how well this is going to come through in this lighting. That's another thing. The lighting is just not good in here. Um, this light bar that we have up here is actually the one that we've had for quite a while. I didn't find anything that I liked better, and this was pretty simple and classic, so I went ahead and stayed with it. It might be something I'll change down the road, but for right now, I didn't see any really urgent need to do that, so I went ahead and left that. And then the mirror is something I also considered changing, but then as I started accessorizing here, I started liking the mirror more and more. I felt like at first it might be too much white, but then it sort of grew on me and I kind of liked the way that it looked. Um, that mirror is from Hobby Lobby. It was originally a black framed mirror and my husband spray painted it for me a few years ago. So we've had it for quite a while, but it's got some bevel detailing on it. So it makes it look a little bit nicer. There's me, by the way. Um, so I went ahead and kept that. I think that I kind of like it now. So there is a look at sort of the vanity area there. And also down here on the end, again, that is silver tin, the little tissue holder. We mounted that on the end of the vanity here. And then the wastebasket there is from Home Goods as well. Okay, so now here is sort of a awkward item to talk about, but we did replace the toilet as well. And I have to be honest, I chose this one strictly on the looks. I just love the shape of the tank. I like that the handle on it went with the other Silverton items from Delta and I just like the top on this. I thought it was really pretty, but it turns out it is also a low flow or it's got a low um, water capacity for flushing. So that makes it a little bit more efficient as well. Since we've repiped our house, we also had to get a new hot water heater and we've started saving about $15 a month on our water bill. So that's sort of been a good result of all of this. Moving up here to the top, we have this wall cabinet. This is also from Foremost Company, and this is Naples as well. So it is uh, in the same line as the vanity. We really liked this because we wanted more storage in here. We definitely needed that, but I didn't really want a bigger vanity. So this one is 36 inches, and I didn't want to have it too close to the toilet. So I liked the size of that. I wanted a more furniture style to stay away from the wall, but I knew that I needed some sort of vertical storage so that we could store some items in here. One kind of neat thing about this is it has this pull down drawer here so you can store extra toilet paper there which makes it really convenient. And then I've just got some different things up here as well. Nothing too exciting but you can see it has a pretty good amount of storage. Probably not for towels but I put the towels down below so that's been really nice. Um, so I think that is pretty much everything on this side of the bathroom. So now I'm gonna go back in and sort of swing around here. Oh, I should actually probably show you these rugs. So I got these at Home Goods as well. So I have this one here and then this one here in front of the shower. I'm calling these noodle rugs because they look like noodles to me, but they are actually microfiber. So they are really absorbent and so, so soft. It's kind of hard to tell, but these are very 
thick and plush and I just absolutely love them. I probably would have liked them to be in a little bit lighter of a gray color but this was all that they had in this style and I loved it so much that I went ahead and went with it. But it does match the gray or the grayish silver that I have going through the towel and then that piece of artwork as well. Okay, let me flip you around now to the So we were at the hall entrance of the bathroom again and here is a look at the shower curtain setup that I have. I didn't like any of the shower curtains that were available so I knew that I wanted to use curtain panels instead. So I started doing a little bit of research. I went to Pinterest and I typed in curtains as shower curtains and there were quite a few people doing this so it's definitely not a new concept. There's some that looked a lot nicer than this with really pretty valances and things across the top but what I decided to do instead was get 84 inch curtain panels and these are from Bed Bath & Beyond and then I got a shower curtain rod that I mounted really close to the ceiling. I wanted to be able to hide as much of that old tile as possible. And if I wanted to completely cover it, I would have had to get longer panels. Being 84 inches, these come pretty close to about the bottom of the tub, maybe a little bit more than halfway, but they weren't quite long enough to go all the way to the top, but it was still suitable for what we needed. I had actually purchased a double shower curtain rod thinking that I would put the liner um, on the interior rod and then the curtains on the exterior rod, but it didn't work out that way. I wasn't able to find a shower curtain liner that was long enough to cover both the inside of the shower and the outside and give the look that I wanted. So I ended up getting a separate shower curtain rod, which I will show you inside here. So I ended up having to get a separate shower curtain rod. This is a hookless liner, so it just slid right over on there. Uh, this was from Bed Bath & Beyond also, and I think the brand is just called Hookless. But I really like the simple satin detailing. This is in an ivory color, and it went really well with these panels. Um, as far as pulling the panels back, I just you know, kind of measured them evenly in the middle and then I just pulled them to the side here. I went to Home Depot and I purchased a couple of the command hooks. So I have those back here and these are suitable for wet areas. So that's why specifically I, why I got these. And I think they had up to a three or five pound weight capacity on those. And then I picked up a little bit of this rope detailing from Hobby Lobby and it's again in that silver gray color that I have in the other accessories in the house. So on my little noodle rug here and some of the other things that I've already shown you. And so I just took a little bit of that and cut it and then pulled these back. And I also found this little beading detail in the same area. I just thought it was really pretty. It doesn't really serve any purpose other than I thought it was kind of cute to add a little bit of something interesting to the tie backs other than just the plain rope there. And then I did the same thing on this side as well. And as you can see, we are very space limited and this cabinet's pretty large. These curtains do come out a little bit more than I would like up against there, but again, we're working in such a small space that I have to just kind of do the best that I can. I mentioned to you before, this is a really awkward bathroom because it does have two entrances despite, and also um, besides the fact that it's very small, it has these two doorways. So this other doorway here goes to our den. So the shower curtain is really the main focal point and that's why I wanted to focus so much attention on it and make it something a little bit more special than just a regular shower curtain. I knew this would be the first thing that you see when you come in and because this bathroom won't accommodate a lot of other accessories, I just wanted to make this a little bit special. So that is sort of what I came up with and I'm really really happy with how it turned out. I like this um, liner a lot. I like that it's easy to replace because it is hookless. It just snaps in. It comes with an interior liner as well and that just snaps in so if I need to replace that I can do that very easily. And then the sheer part here at the top lets a little bit more light in. We don't have a separate light in the shower so it's sort of important that we still get a lot of light in especially because I was bringing these shower curtain panels up so high. And let me just show you the tile in here while I'm at it. So it's nothing special. Like I said, it's just very simple. It's not horrible, but uh, still something that I kind of wanted to just disguise a little bit with this little fancy shower curtain setup. So there you go. There it is. So that is it. That is a look at our updated hall bathroom. If you have any questions about the project, anything that you feel like I might be able to answer for you, go ahead and leave those questions down below and I will do my best to answer them. I thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you very soon. Bye-bye.